good. Hold on one second, guys. All right, hey guys, Alex here, AJNashville.com. Like the title says, we are talking about choosing a logo and kind of what I look for. Now, most of you know over the years, I have become very informed, not necessarily an expert, but very informed on branding and designing and things like that. I'm not the person that designs a logo because to be frank with you, I don't have an artistic bone in my body. But through research and through the things that I've taught myself and the things that I've learned and the things I've learned from other people, I've learned quite a few different things. Now, I bring this up because I see a lot of people in my newsfeed, entrepreneurs, people that are getting started in their business, people that have been in their business for a while, but they're ready to scale it and they're ready to do some things to make their business their own. And one common theme that I see is, hey, what do you think, logo one, two, or three? Now, the big thing we have to think of when we're designing a logo is, well, there's a couple things. But one of the biggest things is scalability. So take McDonald's, for example. And I know McDonald's is kind of an extreme point because McDonald's is a large, huge corporation. But hopefully if you're watching this and you do or you are looking for a logo, your goal is to be a huge, large corporation one day. If not, maybe you just don't need a logo. But the thing is, is you can take a McDonald's toy, for example. My daughter the other day, she got one. It was this big. I mean, something tiny. And the thing is, is you could see the little golden arches on the back of it. You could tell that that was a McDonald's logo on that because it's scalable. Now, the logo looks the same whether it's a hundred foot tall or a quarter of an inch tall. That is something you wanna consider when you're designing a logo because you don't want something that distorts as it gets too big and doesn't look like it's supposed to, or as it shrinks, it gets so muddled together that you can't read what it is. A lot of that is taking out the wording of your logo. If you have a lot of wording within it, you're going to want to remove that because you can't read words if you put them on something, let's say the corner of a business card, for example. If you try to take hanashville.com does home loans in the state of Tennessee and you shrink it up to something that big on the corner of a business card, you cannot read it any longer. Now it becomes muddled. The other thing is colors. You want to try to stick to some basic coloring. And the reason why is when you look at a shirt, a shirt is very basic in coloring from a affordability concept. So a shirt like this, for example, single color, it's a readable logo. I can use the negative space if I needed to, if I put something else around it or on the back, uh, you can use the negative space of the shirt in order to make out the rest of the logo. The nice thing is, is this is a single print. Now, one of the other companies that we have, uh, the logo is five, almost six different colors. And I say almost six because there's a color in between that they have to stamp two different colors on top of in order to make that color. That is a very expensive shirt to make. These run less than $10 to make. The other ones run right at $20 a piece to make. Something you want to keep in mind. If you're doing guerrilla marketing, it is very difficult to buy a hundred shirts at $20 a piece as opposed to a hundred shirts at $10 a piece. So consider those things when you're marketing. Also, the other thing you want to think of is, is this a common logo? I see it all the time in the real estate industry, and guys, I'm going to pick on you here for a minute. Just about everyone you see, you see either a half a roof, let me help you find your way at home or whatever, or you see a skeleton key. I've used this analogy a million times. If you're trying to be a yellow hat in a sea of blue, you want to be the one that uses a different icon or a different logo. Most of all, you want to be the person that has legal rights to your image that is on your logo. If you don't have legal rights, you can find yourself in a lawsuit, which means whatever you've done and gained monetarily from that logo, you can be exposed to uh, penalties and fees for that. So bear that in mind. We, we sometimes get cheap. We jump on places like Fiverr, things like that. We say, make me a logo. Cost us 20 bucks and not a single image on there is legally our image. So you want to make sure when you do something, use a professional. I've got a couple of mine. If you guys need some pointers, some directions, building a logo, building a brand is not cheap. Don't take the cheap way out. And if you notice with a lot of companies, once they've got their brand out there, it's the brand that sticks with them forever. There's that recognition. So anyways, I hope this was helpful for some of you that were listening. Like I said, I saw this coming through my newsfeed quite a bit and I wanted to address it because the last thing I want to do is see my friends suffer or make a poor decision when it comes to choosing a logo. Anyways, hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk to you later.